women who participate in college, professional, and in the business industry of sport are very, very underappreciated and not really well represented in the thing. So my presentation is on where are the women. Um, so just a little of what we're going to be looking at today. Um, so some not so fun facts in regards to college athletics, networking opportunities, the glass ceiling, and leadership opportunities. Um, and then we're going to go into University of Mount Union and the recruiting that they do. Um, so how many women's sport compared to men's. Uh, do you believe that receiving a football scholarship, you're receiving a scholarship to play football for the University of Mount Union. Um, the University of Mount Union social media, so their Twitter and Instagrams, and then a call to action, so how can we fix this problem? And I chose to do this because I am a sport business major and I am a female, so this is kind of an important topic to me considering that I am headed into this field. So, um, in the industry currently, in all work industries, women make 80 cents for every dollar that a man makes. Um, uh, women lack the resources in terms of support, opportunity, and networking. And 24% 24, 24 of college athletic operating budgets go towards female sports. 16% um, of recruiting budgets are used on females. 6 to 8% of total media <coughs> sports coverage is devoted to women athletics. Um, and then we kind of probably have all heard a little bit about the glass ceiling. So it's an artificial barrier that's based on organizational bias um, that is to prevent quali uh, qualified individuals from advancing upward in their organization. And that's from the Department of Labor. Um, and then Male athletics get $175 million more in athletic scholarships each year than females do. 0.5% uh, of advertising revenues go towards women's sports, and then 40% of sport and physical activity participants are women. Um, so I put a little <coughs> videos from TED. Uh, it kind of explains Title IX, because not everyone really knows what Title IX is and like what it has to do with women in the sport industry and the equality and participation. Congress passed a law called Title IX, which protected girls and women from discrimination in schools, colleges, and universities. This included discrimination in school-sponsored sports. At that time, only 15% of college athletes were women, and in high schools, only 7% of athletes were girls. Female athletes didn't get a lot of support either, and often had to provide their own uniforms and equipment. It was Title IX that forced school administrators to make sports more equal. But what does equal mean in sports? The government developed rules to measure equality under two general categories, participation and treatment. In the early days of Title IX, the number of girls playing sports was so low that it would have been very difficult for schools to suddenly provide exactly the same number of opportunities for girls and boys. Instead, the government wrote rules that gave schools three options, or tests, to demonstrate fairness and opportunities for girls. The three tests are proportionality, progress, <coughs> and satisfied interests. A school can pick which tests to follow. Proportionality means that girls should receive the same percentage of athletic opportunities as the percentage of girls in the student body. So if 51% of students are girls, then girls should have approximately 51% of the opportunities to play sports. The second test, progress, requires schools to make up for the days when girls had fewer opportunities by adding new sports for girls on a regular basis. The third test asks if girls' interests in athletics are satisfied. Under this test, a school must regularly ask female students what sports they are interested in and also take into consideration the popularity of certain sports in the area where the school is located. It must then add teams according to the girls' interests. Another important part of Title IX is that it doesn't just look at how many athletic opportunities are available to each sex, 
but whether those opportunities are of equal quality. Specifically, Title IX requires equality between boys and girls teams for things like equipment and supplies, publicity, the scheduling of games and practice times, and the quality and number of coaches. Girls should also have equal access to locker rooms, practice spaces, and competitive facilities, as well as medical services. So if the best time to play basketball is on Friday nights because that's when most parents and fans can come, then the girls and boys teams should take turns playing on Friday nights. If boys teams play in a stadium with lights, scoreboards, and concession stands, then girls teams must have the same opportunity, either by sharing those facilities or getting their own of equal quality. But as we all know, just because a law exists doesn't mean that everybody follows it. School officials are responsible for making sure there is fairness in sports, but you can help too by keeping an eye on your own school. Look around. Are there a lot more boys than girls who play sports? Is the boys' soccer field better than the girls? Are athletic trainers available to all teams equally? Does the baseball team get new uniforms every year while the softball team gets them every three years? If you think there might be inequality in your schools, you can approach a school administrator, a parent, or the Office of Civil Rights, a government agency that makes sure schools comply with Title IX. Because equality is important for everyone, both on the field and off. <coughs> okay, so based on that video, oh, okay, yeah. um, based on that video, how many of you think that Mount Union um, kind of complies by these rules of Title IX? Just showing it. Union currently has 24 sports teams. 13 of those are men's teams and 11 of those are women. Um, so I have a couple friends who play football here at the University of Mountain Union and just as like a joke I kind of just asked like do you think you're, like, you're giving money to play football here? Um, and they had some kind of interesting responses. I asked six of them but they only put two of the responses in because four out of the six of them said that they think they do receive some kind of money. Like it's not given as a sports scholarship but it's given um, in other ways. So someone I asked said, I received probably less than a 3.0 in high school, but Mount still rewarded me an additional academic scholarship of $2,000. Um, so he didn't really know where that money kind of came from, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and another person said, oh yeah, they say they don't, but we for sure get something for playing football here. It's the school's money maker. Um, so on Mount Union's website, it states that the NCAA Division Three must offer at least six sports for men and six sports for women except for those institutions with enrollment under a thousand students. Um, they may offer five sports per gender. Um, and the institution must, must sponsor at least three team sports for each gender. The school must also have partic equal participating male and female teams or participants in the fall, winter, and spring seasons. Um, and it also states that no student athlete, athletes are permitted to receive uh, athletically related financial aid. Um, so I thought it was really interesting when I like just like joked around and like, asked the question and four out of six of them kind of made a joke back with me and was like, oh yeah, we get we get some type of money. Um, and that's not even just like football. If you ask other sports, um, some of them will say the same things, although like money is a different amount. Obviously, Mount Union does make a lot of money off their football team, so they're willing to kind of help with that. Um, and so I also decided to take a look at Mount Union Instagram and Twitter pages. Um, so on Twitter, uh, that's a screenshot of Mount Union's Twitter. Um, as you can see, the header there is all of Mount Union's past three um, Stag Bowl championships. Um, and just looking at that, you can see there's no, I know it's small, but like there's no recognition of any women on there. Um, and scrolling down the little Twitter, I found that the past 15 tweets that we have tweeted had, did not include women's um, sports. And I know volleyball played in the Double Tree tournament this weekend, and it took me a really long time, but only their Friday game was mentioned. They played Friday and Saturday, but the only the outcome of their Friday game was mentioned. There was no mention of their Saturday game because Mount Union Twitter consisted of Mount Union football versus John Carroll. Um, so I don't know the outcome of that game. But they won on Friday. Um, and so on Instagram as well, this is another screenshot. Um, so as you can see by the picture, 
there's only one picture of the uh, volleyball game that was held. The rest are all men's sports. There's soccer, um, golf, football, um, and women only appeared in eight out of the 29 posts from the past week. So that's from yesterday until last uh, Monday. So they only appeared in eight out of the 29 posts that were posted. Um, and everyone knows what Instagram highlights are, like on top. So both the two Instagram highlights that Mount Union's Instagram had was boys wrestling and boys football. There was no women's sports included in that as well. Um, so kind of like what we can do about this whole situation is, I think it's kind of like sad that women's sports aren't as pro recommend, like recognized here at Mount Union. Uh, I think we can do a better job of that. I know that our football team obviously is very good, um, but our women's volleyball team currently is undefeated, and I know our women's soccer team is doing phenomenal as well, and they don't get the recognition that they like deserve. Um, so to change that, we can be more inclu inclusive of both men and women's sports, so whether that's on social media, whether that's with your recruiting progress, like process, um, and you can follow the Title IX and the NCAA rules about your money and your social media and being more inclusive with all that. And as the video said, it can re report any form of discrimination. Um, so although like Mount Union's a small school, so we don't see this issue as much as like a big school might, like Ohio State or something like that, but it is an issue. Um, as I said, after we watched Title IX, um, the video, no one raised their hands when I asked if we thought Mount Union like complied with that. So that's kind of sad and that's something that I think needs to change. Read my record.